I've recently completed some research that concludes that working more hours, spending less time with your family, and not planning as many vacations is actually the key to happiness. <laughs> Let me repeat that for you, just so we make sure you get it. Working more hours, spending less time with your family, and not planning as many vacations is actually the key to happiness. Now go with me on this. <laughs> this past year, 257 million, 458,933 people woke up in this country alone not as happy as they'd like to be. How is this even possible? Now, I'm not sure that this number is accurate at all. It may be one or two digits off, but it certainly raises the question for this room. Don't we go through life trying to be happy? I mean, isn't happiness one of the top goals on our list. Now, we've all heard that money doesn't buy happiness. But my guess is if you traded in your 1975 Pacer for a 2017 black and gold Lamborghini, it would probably light up your happiness meter. And if you were able to upgrade your two-bedroom home that you could barely walk around into a 20,000 square foot mansion with ultra landscaping, I'm guessing you wouldn't have been frustrated this morning about who's going to be mowing the lawn. <laughs> now, there's plenty of people that have nice homes, nice cars, nice vehicles. So because so many people are unhappy, I decided to do some research into it. If money can't buy happiness, then what in the world could it be? So I checked into relationships. Surely, if you could find your soulmate, or if you had a great family life, that would lead to happiness. I checked into work experiences. I checked into vacations, even hobbies, anything I could think of that had to do with happiness. I looked into it to see what could be the trigger. And I found out some interesting stats. See, most people go through life thinking that their spouse is going to make them happy. The problem with that is 50% of first marriages end in divorce and 80% of second marriages end in divorce. So just relying on that solely for our happiness is probably not the right way to think about it. Surely if we could maybe have a great family life or spend more time with them, that would lead us to happiness. Well, the good news is there's a Gallup poll that actually agrees with that. They say that if you could spend six to seven hours every single day with someone that you loved, over time you could end up possibly 12 times happier than everybody else. But who gets to spend six to seven hours a day with anybody? Who would it be? I don't even want to spend six to seven hours a day with myself. The same Gallup poll suggests that through their millions of dollars of research, thousands of people interviewed, that they finally figured out that people are happier on the weekends than they are during the week. <laughs> Did we really need a Gallup poll for this? <laughs> See, while relationships are important, they're not necessarily the key to happiness. If I were a scientist and my hypothesis was work less hours, spend more time with your family, and take a whole lot of vacations and you'll be happier than a one-year-old trying to clean out an electrical socket with a screwdriver. Like most one-year-old experiments, it probably wouldn't work out the way that it had been planned. <laughs> so what is it? What is the secret that we're missing? What's this missing ingredient? My friends, I propose to you that it's more about what we give than it is what we get. And giving seems to be becoming more and more important with each and every generation. See, I believe giving changes everything. Recent studies show that if you learn to give, it's the single biggest attribute to your happiness that you can do. Worldwide giving is actually up 240%. Worldwide giving. 
That's an increase over the last decade of tremendous proportions. Harvard Business School has recently concluded a study that proves that if you give someone money, you're actually happier than if you had received that money directly to you. And most people would not have thought that, probably even in this room. Here's something cool for you. People that make less money actually give more. Now, this is exciting for all the broke people in the room because (laughs) now you know why you've been so happy. (laughs) The IRS recently completed a study that showed that middle to lower income brackets actually dug deeper. They actually gave more than the higher income brackets. Is anyone else disturbed that the IRS is now studying happiness? (laughs) Giving is actually contagious. There's now scientific research that shows that giving creates a ripple effect of good things. It actually cultivates the imaginations of the people around us. So one simple act of giving can trigger two to three hundred people to want to participate. So giving's the answer, but is giving, can giving actually create happiness? Is it realistic to even think that that's possible? Harvard Business School thinks so. Matter of fact, the number one college course sought after today is all around giving. It's also around you getting rich. It's called social business. Now, social business is where you combine the power of the marketplace to solve a global world problem. It's where passion is combined with business and purchasing. And I believe that everyone can participate. Take, for example, Tom's shoes. In the last two years, they've given away over 50 million pairs of shoes. But what they really did was they created millions of givers. Every time you purchase a pair of Tom's shoes, they donate one, or you, in essence, donate one to someone in need. And it's an extremely profitable shoe company. But it's profit with purpose. Warby Parker's done the same thing with eyewear. Every time you purchase a set of glasses, they've donated now over 2 million pairs, and the soapbox has donated over 1.7 million bars of soap through their one-for-one giving model. And here's what's interesting. The founders, owners, and employees of these, employees of these companies actually work more hours. They work more hours because they're passionate about what they're doing. They're excited to get up and go to work every day because it means something. They actually spend less time with their family. Now, I'm not talking about spending time with their family. It's, I'm really referring to this country's definition of time with their family. The average family here in the U.S. spends three to four hours a night watching television and looking at their devices thinking that that's actually quality time. Those that are involved in social business or something that has passion attached to it They don't have time to do this day in and day out, and they don't want to, but they include their families in the projects of making the world better. Social business owners and entrepreneurs and employees don't plan as many vacations simply because they're not burnt out on what they're doing. Now, it doesn't mean they don't travel. They love to travel, but they're not looking for a way out. They're not sick and tired every day. They're not, they can't wait to get you know, rid of that job, or they're not, they're not terrified of their job. So when they do travel, when they do go on vacation, they sit around and talk about what they're going to do when they get back because they're so excited about it. Now, these three things, which are the opposite of what most people would want to shoot for, are actually can be tied to what drives a social business entrepreneur to engage in more and more happiness. Now, like most families, my wife and I strive for balance amongst work, goals, time with our kids. There's been parts of our career where we were spending so many hours working for money that we were guilty. And although that idea kept rolling around in our minds, of that guilt, some things that didn't stop were the bills. They kept coming in, and our four boys, two of which were supposed to be girls, didn't stop eating. (laughs) So we had to focus on making some money. 
few years back, we were introduced to the idea of social business as both consumers and a way to create a legacy. We started consuming and purchasing products through social businesses so that we too could become givers. And we incorporated social business into every aspect of our primary business. We found out that over 6 million kids every single year die from malnutrition. It's the number one killer for children under the age of five worldwide. So we were proud when we could partner with an organization that's dedicated to eradicating this terrible problem. Now our fam family spends much of his time talking about things that we're doing to better the world. We brought some passion back into our business. We set goals together. We've traveled locally and now globally, seeing the true impact that a social business can have. And although we still watch an occasional show together, the majority of our time is spent purpose-driven without the guilt attached to most business success. So you may be asking, what can I do? So let me give you just a few things. One, you can begin to purchase from social businesses. There's hundreds of them to choose from. And you can begin to become a giver and better the world, thus you will end up becoming happier. You could also begin to incorporate social business into your everyday primary business. Pick something you're passionate about. Pick something that, that you would like to help get better in the world and attach it to what you do full time. Now, for those in the room that are skeptical saying, hey, Ryan, I can't afford to do that with my business. Let me challenge you on this because what we're finding in this trend of social business is that businesses that incorporate giving into their model end up being more profitable than those that don't. This may be the reason why social business now is being coined as one of the top profitable business ideas of the century. Let me give you three more reasons why social business could be so powerful for you. First of all, social business brings purpose back into everyday business. And those of you that own businesses know that eventually you get tired of chasing money. You want to make a lot of money, we all do, but attaching that to purpose will cause you to want to get up earlier and go to bed later. You want to be excited about what you do, whether it's helping people get a pair of shoes, a pair of glasses, a bar of soap, or eradicating childhood malnutrition, you get to pick what you're excited about. The next thing that social business benefits from that's causing it to have such a great rate of growth right now is that when consumers purchase things that they feel good about, they keep coming back. See, there's a loyalty factor that's baked in for social businesses that's unmatched in conventional businesses. When you're purchasing things from companies that you're passionate about, that you know some good is being done, you're going to want to keep participating. And the last thing I want to talk about is, although it seems like it would cost a lot of money, and it does for conventional businesses, social businesses get the benefit of a loyal customer base that advertises their products for them for free. Because when people believe in what they're a part of, they'll tell everybody they know about it. Social businesses benefit from tens of millions of dollars per year of free advertising. So now you can see why social business is helping cultivate the imaginations of entrepreneurs everywhere to want to participate. And they want to participate so they can bring purpose back into their everyday business. So they can wake up excited. So that they can attract loyal customers that will advertise for free and so that they can increase their profits while making a difference in the world. Now you may not be the owner of Tom Shoes, Warby Parker, or the Soapbox, but you too can participate in social business because you too can become a giver through your purchasing. And if you're lucky enough to be called a social entrepreneur, you're amongst the happiest people in the world. And yes, you're going to work more hours, you're going to spend some less time with your family, and you're not going to plan as many vacations. You see, those that are participating in social business are happier simply because they're givers. I believe giving changes everything simply because giving 
can change the world.